गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू सो इन दिस शॉर्ट वीडियो आई वाज आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन ब्रीफली हाउ द सेंसेक्स इज कंप्यूटेड सो दिस इज अ कॉमन क्वेश्चन बाय मेनी पीपल सर डेली वी आर यूजिंग द वी आर सीइंग द सेंसेक्स इज 50 50000 पॉइंट 45000 पॉइंट्स लाइक दैट सो हाउ एग्जैक्टली दैट इंडेक्स इज कैलकुलेटेड सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन आस्क्ड बाय मेनी पीपल सो आई थॉट ऑफ मेकिंग अ शॉर्ट वीडियो फॉर रिगार्डिंग दैट इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल वीडियो सो बेसिकली सिंपली आई विल शो यू हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द बीएससी इंडेक्स Okay, right. So in Sensex there are thirty stocks. Sensex is, is a group of thirty stocks. Many of companies HDFC, ICICI, Infosys. There are many companies are there. It is a group of thirty uh, stocks. As of now, those thirty stocks are of these companies. As of now, those thirty stocks are of these companies. Look at this. These are the thirty stocks: Asian Paints Limited, Axis Bank Limited, Ultra Tech Cement, etc. so these are the 30 stocks as of now these are the 30 stocks included in the sensex these are the 30 stocks included in the sensex this 30 stocks is not picked from particular industry it is taken from various groups of industries so selected from various industries selected from various industries so if you look at this you will have the banking sector majorly banking sector axis bank limited bajaj finance limited bajaj finsar limited HDFC Bank Limited, ICICI Bank Limited, Indusind Bank Limited, Kotak Mahindra Bank Limited, and the State Bank of India, and State Bank of India. So majority of the Sensex is comprising of the banking stocks. Our approximately 42 percent of the Sensex represents this banking stock. This is banking stocks. Next, if you take the uh, information technology, so HCL Technology is there. HCL Technology, Infosys Limited, HCL Technology, Infosys Limited is there. and next uh, tcs tech mahindra so these are the software companies these are the software companies so therefore an index 30 stocks have been taken from various various industries automobile so automobile we have maruti suzuki india limited and bajaj auto limited automobile we have so fmcg sector we have uh, hindustan unilever limited hindustan unilever limited and nestle india limited we have this uh, uh, this thing and from power sector we have ntpc national thermal power corporation limited and power grid corporation so this we have taken from the different sectors reliance industries oil and gas sector oil and gas sector so therefore these 30 stocks are taken from various industries this 30 stocks are taken from various industries and the important point is that the movements in this 30 stocks the movements in the index so movements in the index are perceived to be representative of the state of the economy very important point i have underlined the word perceived perceived so movements in the stock market are perceived to be representative of the state of indian economy it is only a perception whose perception perception of those people who have selected this tapi stock those who constructed the bsc index that i'll show in the next slide who will who will select this tapi stocks i'll show in the next slide so so those who will select those tapi stocks it is their perception it is their perception that if this tapi stocks are increasing indian economy is improving if this tapi stocks are falling indian economy is falling it is a proxy or representative of the indian economy sometimes it may be true sometimes it may be false okay so take uh, uh, take a conservative optimistic sir majority of the times it may it may be correct but it may not be correct all okay it is only a perception it is only a perception of those who constructed the index so those who constructed the index it is their perception that if the index increases if this index represent the entire indian economy if this index increases indian economy is improving that is the perception the sometimes it may not be true so therefore i just want to give basic clarity basic clarity if index is increased it implies that share price of all the companies listed in the stock exchange increases false statement if the index is increasing it doesn't mean that all the stocks in the uh, stock market increases no false so if the index is increasing it implies that share price of majority of the companies increases so sometimes it is good some, sometimes it is true sometimes it is false okay all companies so the index increases all companies are increasing false utterly false there is no doubt about that if the index increases most of the companies most of the companies are increasing most of the companies are increasing no false sometimes it may be true sometimes it may be false look at take out the recent data if you look at the recent data this s&p bsc sensex has 30 stocks we know that 30 stocks out of the 30 stocks 29 stocks are increasing and only one stock is falling 29 out of 30 stocks 29 stocks are increasing at once and decline is only one stock that is the oh, that is the 30 but if you look at the overall market 
But if you look at the overall market, three thousand seven twenty three stocks are increasing. Three thousand seven twenty three stocks are increasing, and eighteen eighty five stocks are falling, and thirty eight stocks no change at all. Same price. Same price. So therefore, total companies listed in the BSC is five thousand six forty six. Total companies listed in the BSC is five thousand six forty six. So therefore, three thousand seven hundred out of that eighteen hundred, almost majority, almost majority, or you can take less than majority, less than majority. So therefore, sometimes it may be true that majority of the companies are increasing. Sometimes it may be false. Okay. Therefore, sometimes it may be true. Sometimes it may be false. But whatever the companies are increasing, they are major companies. Whatever the companies included in the index, they are major companies. So therefore, if somebody asks if index is increased, it implies that the prices of major companies are increasing. Yes, true. If the index increases, the prices of major companies are increasing. It is true. So this is the basic clarity about index 30 stocks and the remaining 5,616 stocks. There are total 5,646 stocks in the BSC. So out of that, so this 30 is representative of the Indian economy. Selected by some company, selected by one company. Now we'll say, now we'll go. Which company selects that thirty stocks? Now we'll discuss which company selects that stock. I hope everybody is clear. There are three points. First, thirty stocks are there. Thirty stocks are there. That thirty stocks are selected from various businesses, not from only particular business. And the movement in the index is representative of the Indian economy. It is only a percentage. Okay, three points. There are total thirty stocks. Those thirty stocks are not picked from single industry. They are picked from various industries. Next day, so those thirty stocks are representative of the Indian economy. That is only a perception. That is only a perception. It may not be real. Okay, this is the basic clarity about the relationship between the index and other stocks. It is the basic clarity about relationship between the index and other stocks. Next, we will discuss who will select the stocks. Who will select the stocks? So, Sensex is first time competed in the year 1986. So, at that time, only BSC alone. Bombay Stock Exchange Limited, that company alone is used to compete the sensex. So in 19 from 1986 onwards, only BSC alone is used to compete the index. But from 2013 onwards, but from 2013 onwards, so in 2013 February 19 2013, there is a joint venture or partnership agreement between two companies. What are the two companies? S and P Dow Jones India LLC and BSC Limited. So these two companies of joint entity uh, has come has uh, has formed a new partnership. So these two companies have entered into a new partnership. What is the name for this new partnership? The name for this new partnership is Asia Index Private Limited. So Asia Index Private Limited is a joint venture between S and P Dow Jones and BSE Limited. S and P refers to Standard and Poor, an international an, an American credit rating agency. S and P refers to Standard and Poor, an American credit rating agency. So an American credit, an American company, an Indian company. So both have entered into a joint venture partnership. So they have formed a new company called as Asia Index Private Limited. So this company, this company now computes the sensex. So now, now it is now this is the company which selects the thirty stock. Now this is the company which selects the thirty stock. Not only the thirty stock. So this company selects various uh, indices. So that we'll discuss in the coming lectures. So in this lecture, I am discussing only sensex. There are many indexes within the BSC. Within the BSC, there are many indexes that I'll come step by step. So in this lecture, I'm discussing only the sensex. Okay, okay, right. So Asia Index Private Limited is a joint venture company. Right. Next, so what is the criteria they will use? What is the criteria they will use to select the thirty company? So out of five thousand six hundred and forty-six companies, how they will pick this thirty company? How they will pick this thirty company? There is a complicated and a very lengthy procedure for that. But now I'm taking very briefly. Those thirty stocks are selected from top hundred stocks based on market capitalization. So those thirty stocks selected should be trading during the last six months, and those are most liquid and financially sound. What is meant by most liquid? Many people are trading in that stock, buying and selling. Many people are trading in that stock. Maybe buying, maybe selling. Many people are trading in that stock. That is the most liquid. So these stocks will be included in that. These stocks are included in that thirty. Okay, right. So there are many methodologies. To compute the index, there are many methodologies. So the Sensex is computed using this methodology called as pre-float market capitalization. Sensex is computed using this methodology called as pre-float market capitalization. Pre-float market capitalization. Sensex is computed using this methodology. Pre-float market capitalization. Okay, it is a popular method across the globe. Across the globe, it is a popular method. 
Okay, just to ensure that index is computed on par with international standards, SMP has partnered with us. BSC has partnered with the SMP to ensure that our index computation is on par with the international standards. Right. Since most of the stock exchanges across the globe, since most of the stock exchanges across the globe are using this method called as free float market capitalization method, even our BSC Sensex also uses the same method, free float market capitalization method. Right. So I will show you how this method is used. It is a basic simple example anybody can calculate in this way. So this is how the Sensex is calculated without using any software. Anybody can calculate simply. Okay, I have taken this third state 20th May 2021. Third state 20th May 2021. So this is the closing price. Closing price. So these are the five. Uh, these are the five columns we have to use. So closing price on 20th May 2021 for each stock. For each of the 30 stocks, we have to take the closing price and number of shares in crores 95 crores. So Asian Paints Limited has 95 crores in total. 95 crores shares in total. So therefore, full market capitalization, full market capitalization. So full market capitalization, number of shares into closing price. But what is important? But what is important is this concept. The important point is that, sir, what is meant by free float? What is meant by free float? Sir, what is meant by free float? That is the important point. Okay, right. So this is the total market capitalization. Everybody knows. What is the total number of shares issued by the company? Total number of shares outstanding for each company. What is the closing price? What is the closing price? We will get full market capitalization. Out of that, there is some adjustment factor called as free float adjustment factor. Free float adjustment factor. That means this free float adjustment factor of 47. What does it indicate? What does it indicate? It indicates that even though company has total 95 crore shares, even though company has total 95 crore shares, Today, as a common man, if I can I purchase entire 95 crores if I have money? No, the answer is no. So, what is available, commonly available to the investors is only 47%. Out of this 95 crores shares, only 47% shares are available to normal investors. Remaining 53% shares are held by strategic investors. That is to say, promoters, government, private equity, venture capitalist fund. So different names are there. Some people will call it as a strategic investor. Some people will call it as a controlling group. Okay. Or some people will call it as a restricted uh, uh, controlled shares. Okay. So therefore, out of this 95 crores, only 47% is available to the normal public. Remaining 53% are held by the promoters. They will not sell normally. So or they will be held by some foreigners. FDA restrictions are there. You cannot sell those shares. Okay. Are held by government. Government will not sell the shares immediately are held by some other company. So that 53% is removed. That 53% is removed. Now I'll show you out of the what is included and what is excluded. What is included and what is excluded. Look at this. So these are all in included. So these are all the excluded. Long term total outstanding shares minus shares held by long term strategic shareholders. So this is called as free float. This is called as free float. Total outstanding shares minus shares held by long term strategic shareholders. So what is this long-term strategic shareholders? So long-term strategic shareholders include these people, promoter groups, directors, private equity, venture capitalists, other companies and governments. So these are excluded. These are excluded. These are in that 53% category. Just example, whatever I have shown, these are in that 53% category, 53% category. And free float is only the 47% category. Only that is considered for index competition. Only the 47% is considered for the index competition. Depositories, all normal people who are holding shares in DMAT account, that is called as depositories. All normal people who are holding shares in DMAT account, that is called as depositories, pension funds, mutual funds. These are included within that party. These are included within that party. Okay, this is how the free float market capitalization was. So how the fifth column comes, third column and fourth column. So out of total market capitalization of the company, only 47% is available to the public. That 47% amounts to 1 crore 26 lakhs crores. These are all in crores, all in rupees crores. Okay, so this is the free float market capitalization method. Very simple. I have given a basic Excel sheet so that any person, any common man, a layman can calculate in this way. Just take out this closing price of these shares and take out the number of shares of each company outstanding and calculate this free full market capitalization and multiply with this free float adjustment factor. We'll get free float market capitalization. The same calculation I have to use for Friday also. For Friday, 21st May, second day, I have used the same calculation. Same closing price, same number of shares, full market capitalization, 
free float adjustment, free float calculation, same method. So daily you need to update only this column. Daily if you can update only that column. At the end of the day, daily you can fit the closing share prices. End up you can easily calculate the closing index points on your own without using any software complicated methodology. If you can simply just a data entry task, just a data entry task. So if you can update only this column, if you can update only this column closing price, automatically the index will be computed. Look at this today's closing market capitalization. Today's closing market capitalization that is Friday 55 lakhs 80,239 crores. 55 lakhs 80,239 crores. What is this? This is pre float market capitalization, not total market capitalization. This is pre float market capitalization. Pre float market capitalization. Pre float market capitalization. That is pre float market capitalization. 55 lakhs 80,000. Out of previous day, 54 lakhs 71,000. So Friday it is 55 lakhs 80. Thursday it is 54 lakhs 71,000. So therefore, what is the total increase? 1 lakh 8,942 crores increase in market capitalization per day. Per day, 1 lakh 8,942 crores market capitalization has been increased. That is to say 1.99% or 1.97%. I am just using the Excel. So therefore, there may be some rounding of errors. If you look at the BLC website, they may be using complicated software to calculate that as per their methodology it is 1.97% accurate method. This is a 1.97% accurate method. But I have taken approximately, since I am using basic Excel, so for a common man, approximately they can arrive at without using costly software. So 1.99% 1 is the increase, market capitalization. So now previous day closing index point, 49,654. 49,654. Percentage increase, if I put 1.97, this is the closing price. 50,541.29. Check out the Friday closing price, which is 50,541. Check out the bomb, uh, BSC closing price of Friday, 50,500. This is how the index has to be, if you can calculate. Without using any complicated software, without using any costly software, without the uh, without the uh, what you call support of any expert, a common man, any person, any person can compute the stock market index, just if you follow the basic methodology. Okay, just take out these columns. Just take out these columns. Every day we need to update only this point. Every day we need to update only that point. Closing price. Okay, right. Next. So these are the, the this is how the index is computed. This is how the index is computed. Anybody can know it. But the important point, but the important point here is that rebalancing. The important point here is that uh, rebalancing of funds. The important point is rebalancing of funds. So whatever the 30 stocks we have taken, whatever the 30 stocks we have taken, so those stocks will not be same forever. Those stocks will not be same forever. This 30 will be changed for every six months. Every six months in the month of June and in the month of December, these 30 stocks will change. In the month of June and in the month of December, every year, these 30 stocks will be changed. Some stocks may be removed and some stocks may be included. That is called as rebalancing. Some stocks may be removed and some stocks may be entered. That is called as rebalancing. Okay? That will happen every six months. Every six months in the month of June and December. In the month of June and December. In the month of June and December. So within the June month, exactly what, exactly which day those points will change, those companies will change, exactly on what day the index will change within the month of June and December. Monday after third Friday, Monday after third Friday. If I take the June month, if I take the June month, June 20, uh, June 2021, Friday. So third Friday will be 18th. Third Friday will be 18th. 18th June 2021 is the third Friday. So after the further third Friday, immediately next March is 21st June. So Monday after third Friday. So third Friday of June is 18th June 2021. So thereafter Monday. So after this Monday called as 21st June 2021. So now coming 21st June 2021, that 30 stock companies will change. Some companies may be removed and that another some companies will be included. What are those companies, sir? Which companies will be removed in the coming uh, June? And which companies will be included? Very simple, right? So this company, ONGC Limited, this is going to be removed from the stock market from June 21st, 2021 onwards. This ONGC will be removed from the stock exchange because of maybe a lack of poor performance, etc. ONGC is removed and in that place, Tata Steel will come. In that place, Tata Steel will come. So that is how every six months the index will change. So be careful, coming June 21st, June 2021, the index will change, ONGC will be removed, and in that place, Tata Steel will be increased. Tata Steel will be included. Okay? Right. That is our official announcement. 
that is an official announcement. So, like this, every uh, in December also. So, December also it will change. So, therefore, if you take out the December, if you take out the December, what is the third Friday of the December? So, third Friday of the December will be third Friday of the December will be seventeenth Friday. Therefore, twentieth December. So, twentieth December. Be careful. Watch it. Twenty first June two thousand twenty one. And 20th December 2021, the index will change in this current year. In this current year, the index will change. So some stocks may be removed and some stocks may be included within the current within that index. Be careful. Okay. So this is how the rebalancing will change. So in this table, in this table, three columns are very important. Three columns are very important. That is this a uh, company column and this number of shares column, number of shares column, and this pre float adjustment factor. So that uh, this closing price will change every day. This closing price will change every day, and this full market capitalization and this we have to compute on our own. That is a, that is to be computed. So these are out of these three, out of these three, this will change every half year. Just now we have discussed this will change every half year. This will change every half year. Whereas this number of shares will change normally every quarter. So normally every quarterly those number of shares will will be updated. Stock exchange will update. Companies may issue number of shares, and this pre-float adjustment factor is normally updated annually. Normally updated annually. So everything is systematic. Everything is systematic. So we will not. Uh, I will not give any figure. I will not say anything based on rumors, etc. So based on the official data out of scientific research, I am a US CFA charter holder, chartered financial analyst from the US CFA Institute. We'll do everything scientifically, and we'll give only authenticated information and most valid information. Authenticated information. Okay, so this float adjustment, number of shares. If the if the number of changes, if the number of shares, say for example today hundred shares are there, tomorrow company is, is issued some more three shares, one or three shares. Therefore, only three percent change. The three percent change. So this three percent change is updated only quarterly. It will not be updated on a daily basis. So any change less than five percent is updated only quarterly. Any change less than five percent is updated only quarterly. I am talking about this column. So this column I have already explained. This column I have already explained. Every half year in the month of June and in the month of December, the thirty stocks will change, and this number of shares. So this will change. Uh, this will change every quarter. If such changes are less than five percent, they will be updated quarterly. If such change is more than five percent, they will be updated immediately. Okay. If such change is less than five percent, they will be updated quarterly. Say Monday following the third Friday. Monday following the third Friday of March, June, September, December. Okay, if the change is less than five percent, it is updated quarterly. If the change is more than five percent, it is updated immediately. It is updated immediately. That is about the second column. That is about this uh, second column. Now this float adjustment factor. Float adjustment factor. That means today promoters are holding more shares. Tomorrow they may sell shares. Our promoters may purchase the shares from the public. That means this public shares available to the public. So this is called as shares available to the public. So total shares remain same, sir. Okay, are you total shares remain same, but shares available to the public may change. But shares available to the public may change. So therefore, this change is accounted generally uh, per annum, annually. Float adjustments are normally reviewed annually in the month of September, Monday following the third Friday of September. So this is the important day we have to remember. So March, June, this March, June, September, and December. Out of these four months, you have to take third Friday. What is the third Friday? And thereafter, coming Monday, that should be important day. Some major event may happen in the stock exchange index computation. So, if the float changes are five percent or more, they are implemented immediately. If the float changes are less than five percent, they will be updated only half yearly. So, therefore, for your common understanding, simple understanding, I have given. So, these three these three columns will change. So companies will change half yearly, number of shares will change quarterly, and pre float adjustment factor may change annually. This is what is the uh, policy of uh, Asia Index Private Limited, a joint venture. Now, finally, I thought of sharing the comparison between the Shanghai Stock Exchange of China and the BSE Stock Exchange of India. These are the industries we have seen. These are the industries we have seen. So based on this index, based on this composition, will I? We can easily analyze a financial person can easily analyze. In which area, which country is strong? In which area, which country is strong? So, if you compare this information technology, Chinese stock exchange has only 3.7 percent, whereas Indian stock exchange has 17.7 percent. We have an edge. Indian stock, India is better than China so far as the information technology is concerned. So far as the software is concerned, India is better than China, 17 percent representation. Similarly, telecom, China has only 1.3 percent. 
but BHC Sensex has 2.31%. Similarly, financial sector, Chinese banks are 33% of the Chinese economy, but whereas Sensex is 44%. Sensex is 44%. Okay? So in these three areas, India is better than China. In these three different in these three businesses or sectors or industries, whatever you call. So in these three industrial segments, India is better than China. In these three industrial segments, India is better than China. So the worry point is this point: industry and metals. Manufacturing, manufacturing. This is the weakness of India and the strength of the China. The strength of the China and the weakness of India is lies in the manufacturing. Heavy manufacturing, large scale and high technology equipment manufacturing. So China has industrial and metals. 27.6%, but India has only 9.44%. But India has only 9.44%. That means only one third of China. China is three times better than India, so far as the manufacturing is concerned. And healthcare also, China is better than India, almost double. India is 2.5, China is 4.8. And consumer deliverables like manufacturing of refrigerators, air coolers, etc. So in those also, China is 10% and India is only 1.16%. So this is the so these are the uh, basic strengths and weakness between the Indian stock exchange and the Chinese stock exchange. Okay, thank you, thank you, one and all.